Um, is a professor of political science at the University of Ghana. He's the president of UTAG, University of Ghana. So uh, in addition to obviously being an, uh, an expert and analyst of political um, landscape, so he can help us with the conversation about the EC's uh, bid for transparency, he also is part of organized labor. And he's one of the leaders uh, of UTAG, uh, and especially in the University of Ghana. So we can talk to him about both issues. Prof, good morning to you. Thank you for your time. Hi, good morning. Um, I'm well. How are you? Uh, we're very well indeed. It's good to have you on the show. So, Prof, m m let's start with the labor issue. I think it's a burning one. We know there's a meeting coming up this afternoon. Uh, but the the terms were made very clear by organized labor. You 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 made specific demands. You said if those demands are not met by yesterday, then today specific things would happen. There would be strikes, there would be demonstrations. Uh, is there any likelihood of this plan changing at this meeting? Um so as you may have said, there's going to be a meeting of organized Prof, may, can I ask you to reposition yourself a bit? We're, we're losing every other word you say because the signal isn't great. Uh, um, is, it, is it better? Oh, Canadian? yes, much better. Would you mind okay. just starting again, please, so that we, we get no, what you're I'm saying. saying that we're clear in our demands to government. Mm. And um, we, are, oh, we also gave an ultimatum, um, which um, the deadline which ended yesterday. And so um, this afternoon, organized labor will be um, And then the way forward will be decided and communicated. Yeah, Prof, when you say you were clear in what, in what your demands were, do I get the impression that today you're going to be deciding on the timelines that you actually roll out your next line of action? Or you are now going to decide the next line of action? No, but we said that if government doesn't um, heed to our call, that it it declares a state of emergency and to do certain specific things to help the fight against um, Galamse, we would we, we would um, do a series of actions, and so the meeting will decide the series of actions um, that we will take to drum home our our message and to um, insist that the right thing be done. And it is regrettable and unfortunate that <laughs> we live in a country and we have to, it has to get to this point where organized labor would have to be fighting to protect the life of even the politician and the rich, greedy man who is compromising um, his own safety and security. We have to be fighting. I mean, it is so clear that that we are dying. Um, if we don't do things well, we are told very soon we'll be importing water. Everybody knows. Everybody can see the destruction of our water bodies. And what is so scary, um, over the weekend I was um, discussing this matter with my own secretary, who is a chemist. The kinds of things that he's telling me that the water bodies have already been polluted with heavy metals and those heavy metals it is difficult for us to take them out of the uh, water bodies as for the mud and those things yes it will cost us a lot of money to be able to um, take them out but we can do it but how about the heavy metals and you ask yourself, so are there no wise and sensible people in the country who know this? That it has to take labor to be thinking about what to do. Don't we have leaders? Are the leaders not aware of some of these dangers? And must we always fight government mm. for the right thing to be done? Has the government itself no appreciation okay. of what is right? So, I mean, so it is it is worrying, and 
And you talk about these things and they say, but you should also be dealing with the opposition. And I think it's a national issue. And it is a certain group of people who have been given the fiduciary responsibility to act. They have the uh, monopoly over the instrument of force and the coercive apparatus of the state. Okay, so they, at this particular point in time, must act. And that is all we are asking for. And, okay. Uh, asking for this, you know, this is not even about salary increment for government to say that, look, you people, you are doing something too much and we don't have the money. This is about um, a threat, existential threat to humanity that we are all dying. And if we are all dying, don't we have the sense to protect ourselves? I am. I, it is. It is so worrying, and so so. And you hear some of the arguments that people who are supposed to be learned are are canvassing just because they are doing partisan politics. Mm. So over prof- over the week, I have heard. I'm told a medical doctor on <laughs> air saying that the water bodies only got compromised just about a month ago. When somewhere in November 2022, we had the managing director of Ghana Water Company writing or giving interviews to complain about the destruction and pollution of our water bodies. This man, medical doctor, is saying that the water bodies got compromised just about uh, one month ago, and that some people, the opposition actually imported um, foreigners and ask them to go mine in water bodies just to make the government unpopular. And I'm asking that if you are in government and you have all the power and authority and you look on, you have evidence that the opposition has actually gone to rent or to recruit or to hire foreigners to come and destroy our water bodies. What did you do to stop that? Have you arrested those who are compromising our water bodies? If you have this information and you don't, you don't do anything about that, then you have no business being in government. Okay. It is so upset and upset that, you see, partisan politics is a bane to quality educational outcomes. Excessive partisan politics breeds madness because some people have been educated. But you can see, just because of partisan politics, they suddenly cannot think right. They suddenly cannot behave well. Just because of partisan politics, they talk as if they are mad. Mm. So, Prof, I mean, you, you, you talked about the fact that um, today, as you meet, you'll be, taking, you'll be taking a decision on your next line of action. Now, when you addressed, um, you, know, you said, if government fails to do these things, you would embark on a series of protests culminating in a strike action. What we want to find out is that at today's meeting, are you looking at when you start the protest or you're looking at what actions are available? Because you've told us what actions are available. So are we looking at when you're starting these protests and strike actions? I do not think it is appropriate for me to jump the gun or for all of us to jump the gun. Organized labor is made up of various labor unions, several of them. UTAG is part. So when we meet, there will be healthy contest of ideas as to what should be the backing um, line of action, that, uh, the, the biting line of action that we can take to, um, that will force government to do what is right. And so I don't think I am in a position to predict um, exactly what, what, what must be done. But when we meet... Um, I am always busy. I do not attend. I don't. I always ask um, that I get represented. But today I'll be there myself, and mm. we would all go there to dialogue and Georgia. And um, given the nature and the extent to which we are leaving dangerous ecological footprints on our environment and destroying our water bodies, I think with that fear and with that with that fright that we all have, we would all go and and. Um, contribute to a discussion as to what should be the appropriate line of action to resort to, just to ensure that um, um, government does the right thing. Mm. Prof, uh, those who defend government's uh, record in fighting Galamsey suggest that 
their hands are now being tied by the political discourse and that uh, the, the, the opposition seems to be taking advantage of the situation and actually making inroads into constituencies and areas where illegal might be making themselves uh, seem like a better alternative for illegal miners, which then makes this party in government worry about losing votes in these areas, and so they become impotent in fighting uh, Galamsey. What does organized labor, you know, as you, you as one of the leaders of organized labor, what is your take on this particular defense? Now, it is not a politically smart defense to offer. I mean... Like I said, you see, uh, it, it, it is not a politically smart defense to offer. If all of us are dying, including those who are doing the galamsey, if they also are dying, and then you offer a certain sensitization drive aimed at eventually halting or yes, halting all the maneuvers and the kinds of things that are done to destroy our water bodies, and you are successful at that. Don't you think that today we would all be hailing you? Organized labor is not happy with what is going on. Organized labor believes that Galamse is an existential threat to humanity. And so we are asking government to put its feet down to ensure that the problem is addressed. And so you go out of your way to address the problem. Wouldn't you rather win the hearts of people who know that they are dying and you have saved them? And so some of the arguments see, like I said, I said excessive partisanship breeds madness. And when you are mad but, uh, politically, you do not open yourself to some of these analysis. You cannot even you cannot even appreciate them. Hmm. You sitting there, I'm sure you are not happy about what is going on, how we are destroying our environment. And so today, if you have a government that says that, um, um, yes, that says, I put my presidency on the line, but I went back for it. And I'm going to put it on the line again. Damn the coming election. Damn its impact on the coming election. But I want to do the right. And you do the right. You think that Ghanaians would not reward you for doing the right thing? Ghanaians hmm. want to punish you. All of us want to punish you. We were dying and you intervened to save us. Want to punish you or will punish you for saving us? It is not a politically smart um, defense that is being offered. And, like I said, because excessive partisanship breeds madness, people cannot even be open to some of these analysis. Hmm. If you just joined us, we're talking to Professor Ransford Jampo. He's a professor of political science at the University of Ghana. He also happens to be the president of the University Teachers Association of Ghana, UTAG, uh, for the University of Ghana. Um, uh, Prof, Let's talk a bit about uh, today's big IPAC meeting. Uh, the EC has granted the request to allow the media in to the IPAC meeting. And the simple reason they've offered is that they want to build trust in their processes. Will this work? Uh, but are you done talking about Galamsey? Let me make the final point. Certainly. So, um, um, on Galamsey. Certainly. I, I, want, I want all to know that it is just coincided. The fight against um, illegal mining and how it is um, serving as an existential threat to humanity um, has become so serious because of the way and manner now people can see and probably feel the impact of such illegal mining activities on their health and so if we are fighting against it it is not a fight aimed at making any regime unpopular and so the disingenuous and bogus argument that say that oh but why are you fighting it now why are you talking about it now if possible wait for uh, wait and come and fight against it um, after the elections are over <laughs> uh, it, uh, 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 it's an argument that in my view um, is, is, is regrettable and unfortunate. So the point is that what will happen if after winning power all the people are dead? Will you be able to even go about canvassing for power um, if you yourself you have no health, you have no life? And so first of all, we need life first before all other things. Political power is good, but without 
good health without human life, political power is meaningless. And so let us fight to secure our health. Then once our health and our life is guaranteed, then we can do other things. That is an important message that I want to pass on to the politicians, that human life, human health first before all other things. Thank you.